Here we've got a mini PC that I just asked my wife to run over with our car because when this PC company reached out to me, Geekum, and they mainly focus on mini PCs, I said to myself, well, let's check out what this company's about. And they had this advert where this uh, PC, this mini PC of theirs was getting run over by a car. And so I decided, well, I'll get the PC unit in. And if it survives me running it over with a car, then I guess we've got ourselves a video. And that's exactly what we did just here. So we're gonna record this video and it is sponsored by Geekum. But that being said, at Tech Air City, even if we do sponsored videos, it's always gonna be based around products with merit. And essentially this mini PC right here, what we have is something that is the size of roughly an ITX power supply or an SFX power supply, even with the adapter. It is extremely small, but then it packs the punch of having a Core Ultra 9 285H, as well as 32 gigabytes of DDR5 sodium in memory at 5600 megahertz, and then also featuring a two terabyte Gen 4 M.2. However, when I first saw the Ultra 9 series, I thought, oh, okay, is this gonna be any good? But then I started testing it out here, and I noticed that it is much more suited for small form factor, whether it's a laptop, or it's a mini PC like this, where we've actually got the advantages here of having USB 4, and not only that, you've got four type A ports on the unit, as well as two type C ports. And here's where I tested out my flash drive M.2, which gets up to some pretty incredible speeds. On our B850 setup with a Ryzen 7 9800X3D, we were only getting around 700 megabytes per second transfer speeds. But then on this unit here, when I'm just copying games over, for instance, to get it ready for some benchmarks that we're gonna be doing pretty soon, I noticed that the speeds were over double, getting close to 1.4 gigabytes of transfer speeds. So this is because the USB 4 protocol on the Ultra 9 here on this Geek Mini PC is able to go up to 40 gigabits per second. And if you're over Type-C connections, you can also plug in things like docks and get up to four display outs. So actually real world usability with the Ultra series makes a lot more sense in a smaller PC. And here's where we also did some CPU orientated benchmarks here, where I'm gonna show you guys some numbers compared to my Ryzen 7 9800X3D on the desktop. We'll start off with some Cinebench numbers. Here's where we get 23,100 points roughly, as well as a pretty high single core score. But then on the Ultra 9 285 unit here, the 2895H mini PC, we're getting around 18,100 points. And then the single core score is also actually still pretty impressive with the temperatures remaining max of about 90 degrees, but most of the time they're hovering at 80 degrees or under. And this is actually thanks to the all metal chassis, which not only is designed to what Geekum says, handle 200 kilograms of pressure, which after running over it with a car, I do believe that, but also the unit itself being all metal incorporates SSD cooling into the chassis itself, as well as having their own unique cooling design with essentially a push-pull design on mesh on the front and back of the unit, allowing for the cooling performance to actually be really decent. So when we look at the performance for the size, it's actually not too bad, considering it only uses 55 watts max. But then also the noise isn't so bad either. I'll let you guys take a listen with some Tech Yes ASMR. So I'm whispering about 15 centimeters from the camera and the PC is also about 15 centimeters from the camera. So their custom in-house copper heatsink design isn't just doing a pretty good job of cooling my opinion. It also connects to the whole metal chassis, which as we said before is cooling the SSD down, but also it's then giving support for things like their Wi-Fi antennas which they've got Wi-Fi 7 built in as well as Bluetooth 5.4 support. And you even get a 2.5 gigabits per second RJ45 port. So the uses extend not just out of a powerful mini PC, but you can maybe turn this thing even into a NAS. But quickly going over some more benchmarks comparing a mini PC to a desktop 
Ryzen 7 9800X3D, for example, we've got the Blender benchmarks here where the Monster coming in around 116.8 versus 155.4. Then for the Junk Shop benchmark, we've got around 107.2 versus 67.5. Then we've got the Last Classroom benchmark here scoring 81.2 versus 46.8. So obviously with that 55 watt power limit, in some applications, especially when you're utilizing AVX2, the performance can drop off a bit, but still, again, for the whole package itself, it is literally smaller than just the water cooler that's cooling the 9800X3D. So continuing on with the benchmarks here, we've got Geekbench 6, and here's where this Ultra 9285H did really well, especially compared to a dedicated desktop solution, coming in with a single core score here of 3,081 points versus a Ryzen 7 9800X3D's 3,321 points. Then on the multi-core side of things, we had 19,237 on that desktop 9800X3D versus 15,353. And again, all doing this whilst remaining at a low power state of roughly 55 watts max dedicated CPU power draw. So depending on what you're doing, that 55 watt limit on the power profile can mean that you're not losing a whole lot of performance as we saw with the monster benchmark, but you then can be losing quite a bit as we saw with the classroom benchmark. But here's where this Ultra 9285H does have something else going for it too. Since it is a mobile dedicated processor versus a desktop dedicated processor, it does have the Arc 140T graphics on board. And here's where I quickly tested out a game of Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p low settings, and it was getting over 100 average FPS, and the 0.1% lows weren't actually that bad. So if you want to do some very light gaming on games like Valorant, Dota 2, or even Counter-Strike 2, for instance, this thing does have you covered there. But back to that USB 4 that we talked about earlier, because it does play a special role, we're actually going to take off now and go collaborate with another YouTuber and get you guys some dedicated gaming benchmarks. And here's where that USB 4 port, the, especially the Type-C port, it features not only power delivery for fast charging your phone and things like that, but it also features the ability to connect up an eGPU dock. That's an external GPU dock, where in this case, our friend RobTech actually has a dedicated GPU dock that will connect straight up to this PC so we can start benchmarking the RTX 5080, which is the highest GPU that we can put in the GPU dock because it supports up to 450 watts. And then we're gonna compare that against the desktop machine. So let's go take a trip right now and see what numbers we can come up with. So I'm now joined here at the Rob Tech Studio, and I'll also put his handle on the screen and in the description below where Rob Tech specializes in mini PCs. And he's actually gonna fill us in on what you can do to make a mini PC essentially a full-fledged gaming PC, but also talk about some points that I may have missed with this little Geekum unit right here. Hi, I'm Rob from Rob Tech, and this is my first collab with Brian from Tech yes City. We actually live around 10 minutes away from each other. And today we're going to look at this eGPU and how it can power up this Geekom IT15 mini PC. Uh, what's special about the AG02 is that it has Oculink and USB 4. And USB 4 is available on the IT15. So we can really power up this mini and give it some good gaming love. So what's unique about the Geekom IT15 is that it has a three year warranty and it's running an Intel Core Ultra 9 285H, which is one of the most powerful mobile CPUs available with six P cores, eight E cores, and two low power efficient cores. For integrated graphics, it's running Alchemist Plus, not Battle Mage, like found in Lunar Lake, but it still holds up pretty well against AMD's Radeon 680M or Radeon 780M. Also, if you're running a business and you've got some unsavory characters running around, the mini PC has a Kensington lock, so you can keep it safe and secure. And with all that out of the way, it's time to take this GPU dock back to the Tech yes Studio, plug it up to the Geekum IT15, and see how an RTX 5080 can handle with a mini PC versus a full-fledged desktop PC. And also a big thanks to Rob Tech for teaching us the quick and dirty on mini PCs. 
So we're now fast forwarding to the afternoon and we have finished benchmarking on the external GPU dock provided by RobTech and it's worked really well. There was no problems in the functionality of that dock and then plugged in via that USB 4. We did see some very differing results depending on what resolution we played and depending on what game ultimately. And we'll start off here with Marvel Rivals, which would be the best case scenario at 4K high settings, where we really only lost about 8% average FPS. However, do pay particular attention also to the 0.1% lows. They were significantly lower in every resolution in every game that we tested here today. So I will just mention that now because that's going to differ in every single benchmark we've tested here. And then going down to 1440p, we lost about 20% uh, average FPS versus the 9800S X3D desktop counterpart. So this was sort of like the actual best case scenario here. The other games do drop down a bit more and going over to Counter-Strike 2, 4K, we lost about 20% uh, percent of our FPS versus the dedicated desktop solution. Then going to 1440p, we lost around 40% of our FPS here, going uh, dropping off about 200 average FPS and going over to Rift Breaker, at 4K, we lost about 30% average FPS, and then going to 1440p, about 45% average FPS. Going over to Cyberpunk, 4K wasn't too bad. I saw here about an 18% drop in average FPS, and then going to 1440p, it was again quite a significant drop of 45%. So what we can see here with the eGPU plugged in is that you can have a good 4K gaming experience on sort of max settings with a higher end GPU or if you're going with a sort of mid-range graphics card and you're sort of more into just role playing and just casually plugging your mini PC in at home and having a decent gaming experience, you can definitely get that from the eGPU solution plugged into the mini PC. But of course, if you're into competitive gaming, you're probably already over that dedicated desktop gaming solution. But it is good to see that there is a way to get this portability out of something so small with the Geekum unit. But then when you want to, I guess, get more serious gaming happening, you can do that too with that USB 4 port. So that's really good to see that aspect, but do keep in mind you can lose a lot of FPS depending on the game and the resolutions. So showing you guys up until now all the benefits of the mini PC, this here would be the weakest point of the mini PC and that it can't do the high-end gaming that a high-end desktop can do to the same degree. And that's not just with the average FPS, of course, but also those 0.1% lows showing so as well. Anyhow, guys, wrapping all that up, I did manage to go into the BIOS just to look at some different profiles that were available and to see if I could tune the CPU and RAM a bit more, but there was very limited options in what I could do. The only thing I could really change was the fan profile. I did up it to performance mode for the gaming benchmarks. However, the fan is noticeably noisier when even I'm just idling on the desktop here. So I would recommend if you were to get one of these units, maybe keep it on the normal mode or drop it down to the silent mode. However, that said, I also did talk to RobTech about something we might have missed. And he said that these units were really good for their portability, low power consumption, but also their video editing capabilities. With that QuickSync and that Arc 140 GPU inside, you can actually edit even like 4K videos without really many hiccups. So that was really good to hear from him that he's actually used one of these units for editing videos over in Computex. And he said it was actually really impressive in that aspect. So if you're looking for a high-end mini PC, but also when it compares to the desktop scene, I guess a mid-range PC, but just that much smaller footprint with everything this PC has to offer, I gotta say that I'm impressed in that aspect. So for me with this PC, I would see myself personally using it for maybe a trip to Computex in Taiwan where I need to edit videos or I need to do some sort of task where I don't need full-fledged high-end desktop PC power. But at the same time, I really need to keep the size small to carry this thing with luggage. And so that definitely fits the bill there. But also outside of that, you can install different OSs. Me personally, I would be installing Windows IoT. Though since the BIOS does have the option to boot from UEFI, you can install any Linux distro you want outside of the Windows 11 Pro, which actually does come pre-activated on this particular unit. Then now it's time to talk about the most important part with this product, and that is the price. And here's where if you're in the US, it's about 1199 USD. 
And then in Australia, it's about 1,699 Aussie dollars. And that does include everything, the adapter, the two terabyte M.2 NVMe, which is gen four, the 32 gigabytes of RAM pre-installed. So you're pretty much up and running and you don't have to add anything onto this PC, unless of course you wanna add on an eGPU dock to get extra performance from a dedicated desktop GPU. But in terms of the PC itself, it's going to be absolutely fine, but here's the best part. And now Geekum have said that they're going to do a Tech Yes City special. So I'll put the coupon and the links in the description below if you wanna get something like this, where you can get 10% off using the coupon code. So that's really good to see. And ultimately for this price, it's got a lot of power for a mini PC, though it does have some limitations and hopefully we did point that out in today's video but outside of that in terms of the size and the power for that size is actually really impressive not to mention the three-year warranty and the fact that we ran over it with a car and it was absolutely fine after that anyhow guys with all that out of the way hope you enjoyed today's video if you did then be sure to hit that like button also if you have any questions or comments about today's pc then be sure to drop that down in the comments section below and with that aside i'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon Peace out for now. Bye.